For over a century, everyone thought Darwin had laid out the complete roadmap of how humans evolved. A single, unbroken line from ape-like ancestors to us. But new genomic evidence has exploded that idea. Proving we're not a pure species at all, but hybrids carrying Neanderthal DNA within us. The title Darwin's Theory Shatters After Discovery of Neanderthal DNA in Humans isn't an exaggeration. This discovery doesn't just tweak the story of evolution, it turns it upside down. If even the father of evolutionary science missed the clues, what else about our ancestry has been hiding in plain sight? The search for answers begins with the one question Darwin never saw coming. In 1859, Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species, laying out a vision of nature that seemed to fit the world around him perfectly. Victorian England was obsessed with order and progress, and Darwin's idea of natural selection offered a kind of elegant logic. Species changed gradually, adapting over generations, with the fittest surviving and passing on their traits. Everyone talked about a great chain of life, each link leading upward, as if evolution itself was a ladder from simple creatures to modern humans. But Darwin's notebooks told a messier story. He filled pages with branching trees, not straight lines, and scribbled notes about how species might split, diverge, or even blend if isolation failed. The real puzzle for him wasn't just how new forms appeared, but what kept them apart. He spent years breeding pigeons and crossing primroses, watching for the moment when hybrids lost their edge or became sterile. Whenever he looked at mammals, though, he doubted hybrid vigour could last. The science of his day didn't have DNA or genes, just the idea that traits blended, like mixing paint. If populations mixed too freely, differences would vanish. That fear haunted Darwin's theory. Still, in public, he kept his focus on gradual change and branching descent, hinting only once that human origins might be illuminated by his ideas. The notion that humans themselves could be hybrids was a step too far for Victorian certainty. In 1856, a set of strange bones turned up in a limestone cave near Dusseldorf. They didn't match any known animal. The skull was thick, the brow ridges heavy, the shape almost human, but not quite. Scientists argued over what to call it. Some said it was an ancient barbarian, others insisted it was a separate species. Darwin watched these debates from afar. He filled his notebooks with sketches of branching trees and questions about what separated one species from another. If hybrids between closely related animals could sometimes be fertile, where was the real line? He bred pigeons and primroses, crossing them again and again, searching for rules that worked in the wild as well as in the garden. But every time he tried to apply these lessons to mammals, the answers got slippery. If different populations mixed too freely, would their special traits just melt away? Could a species hold its shape if its boundaries were always leaking? These questions haunted his private notes. He wrote about the risk of blending inheritance, about how too much crossing could erase the differences that natural selection built up over time. Without any way to see inside a cell, let alone read a strand of DNA, all he had were bones, fossils, and the limits of what could be bred in a barn or a greenhouse. The Neanderthal skull stayed a mystery, a fossil without a story. Darwin could only guess at how deep the connections ran and whether the boundaries he tried to draw would ever hold up to the evidence hidden in our blood. Getting DNA out of a Neanderthal bone sounds simple until you try it. The real problem isn't just that ancient DNA is rare, it's that almost everything you touch is covered in modern DNA, and it only takes a few stray skin cells or a sneeze to overwhelm the signal. In the early 2000s, Svante Pabo, Svante Pabo, and his team faced this nightmare daily. They'd grind up fragments from Vindia Cave, hoping for Neanderthal sequences. But most of what they found came from the people who dug up the bones, or from scientists who'd handled them over the decades. Sometimes, for every genuine Neanderthal fragment, there were thousands of modern human ones, like trying to hear a single whisper in a stadium filled with shouting fans. So the lab became a fortress. Clean rooms with positive air pressure, UV lights, and researchers in full-body suits, no ordinary lab coats allowed. Every tool was sterilized, every move tracked. 
Even then, the tiniest slip could ruin weeks of work. Early sequencing runs sometimes turned up 99% contamination, and the team realized they needed a new way to tell ancient from modern. That's where barcoding came in. By tagging every bone sample with a unique DNA barcode before sequencing, they could trace each read back to its origin and spot any cross-contamination right away. But even with all these precautions, the team was never sure if the next batch would be a jackpot of ancient code or just more noise. The pressure was relentless. One mistake could mean starting over, and with every failed attempt, the dream of reading the Neanderthal genome seemed to slip further away. Turns out the real breakthrough wasn't a new machine, but a way to tell ancient DNA apart from the modern stuff that kept slipping in. Parbo's team spent years getting fooled by contamination until they realized that authentic Neanderthal DNA carries a kind of signature damage, tiny chemical scars from thousands of years underground. Modern DNA is smooth, but the old stuff is full of C to T, changes at the ends of fragments, like a barcode left by time itself. So they wrote software to hunt for these patterns, tossing out anything too clean. That's how they finally started seeing real Neanderthal code, not just echoes from the scientists in the room. Another key move was barcoding every bone sample before sequencing, so each red E could be traced back to its source. If a fragment didn't fit the damage profile or the barcode, it got flagged. The lab ran endless controls, spiking samples with known DNA, rerunning extractions in parallel, even checking for the sex of the individual based on X and Y chromosomes. When the numbers lined up and the same patterns showed up in bones from different caves, they knew they'd cracked it. Johannes Krauss, working alongside Parbo, helped validate the pipeline with a Denisovan finger bone from Siberia. That find confirmed the tools worked on more than just Neanderthals. By 2010, the team published the first full Neanderthal genome. The scientific world took notice, and in 2022, Parbo's persistence earned him the Nobel Prize for showing that ancient DNA could rewrite our own story. If you check your DNA right now, chances are you're carrying a piece of the past that nobody expected. The number is not huge, but it's everywhere. 1-4% to of the genome of every person outside Africa comes straight from Neanderthals. That's not just a random blip. It means every time you look in the mirror, you're seeing the result of ancient mixing, not a clean break. In Melanesia, the story gets even wilder. People there have up to 6% Denisovan DNA, thanks to a separate wave of interbreeding. And it's not just statistics on a spreadsheet. In 2018, scientists found a bone in Denisova cave that belonged to a girl with a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father, a first-generation hybrid as real as any living person. These aren't distant rumors or guesses. They're numbers you can measure, bones you can hold, and genetic footprints that run through millions of people alive today. You can actually order a DNA test online and find out how much Neanderthal you have in your genes. Companies like 23 and Me and Ancestry include a Neanderthal report with your results. Some people discover they have more Neanderthal variants than 98% of their friends, and suddenly every stubborn streak or weird sleep pattern gets a new explanation. But these ancient genes aren't just quirks, they're still doing real work in the body. Neanderthal versions of the HLA genes help the immune system recognize and fight off old Eurasian diseases. The BNC2 gene, inherited from Neanderthals, affects skin color and how easily you sunburn. High altitude adaptation in Tibetans comes from the Denisovan EPAS1 gene, letting them breathe thin air more efficiently. Not all these gifts are good news, though. Some Neanderthal DNA increases the risk for type 2 diabetes or depression. Every person's genome is a patchwork, with ancient trade-offs woven into daily life. In 2010, scientists sequenced the first Neanderthal nuclear genome, revealing that between 1 and 4% of the DNA in non-African humans comes from Neanderthals. This finding, confirmed by population genomic studies and a 2018 hybrid fossil, directly challenges the linear model of human evolution Charles Darwin described in 1859. Darwin's own notebooks show he questioned the possibility of hybridization, but lacked evidence and molecular tools. 
Today, we know specific Neanderthal genes help shape our immune systems, skin, and even altitude tolerance, while also affecting disease risks. Yet, the full impact of archaic DNA on modern health and behavior remains under investigation. What is clear is that human evolution is not a straight line, but a complex web of interbreeding and adaptation. Our shared genetic legacy with Neanderthals and Denisovans is now a documented fact, reshaping both science and our understanding of what it means to be human.